A big meeting and visit to Australia by Prime Minister Narendra Modi, a welcome by Indian diaspora and of course meetings with business honchos as well. Joining me this morning is a special guest, former Prime Minister of Australia, Tony Abbott is joining us in this morning telecast. Uh, Mr. Abbott, I appreciate you giving us your time and speaking to India Today Television. You've also met uh, Prime Minister Modi earlier when you were the Prime Minister. There have been a lot of talks on trade agreements, on investment. How do you look at uh, this moment right now as the Indian Prime Minister is back in Australia and there are a lot of meetings scheduled? Wonderful to have Prime Minister Modi back in Australia. This is his first visit, visit since 2014. Yes, there have been a number of Australian Prime Ministerial visits to India in the meantime, but regular visits at the top level between good friends are very important uh, to developing the relationship. And I don't think India uh, has a more prospective partner anywhere in the world than Australia. I think Australia has wonderful potential uh, to be a source of resource security to India, as well as wonderful potential to be an additional security partner in a world which uh, is at the moment uh, looking quite unsettled, even dangerous. Mr. Abbott, uh, you, your meetings previously have been with Prime Minister Modi and focusing on boosting people-to-people -people ties on economic relationships as well. Do you think that is something that needs to be, again, bridges that must be formed more? That is something that needs to be pushed ahead in this meeting as well? As Prime Minister Modi himself said just yesterday, uh, the nearly a million Australians of Indian background form a living bridge between yes. our two countries. Uh, but I don't think that India should only be of interest to the Indian diaspora here in Australia. I think India should be of massive interest to the general Australian population. Mm. First, because India has enormous potential to substitute for China uh, as a market and as a source of goods in our vital supply chains. And second, uh, because India is the world's emerging mm. democratic superpower, and uh, in the world right now, we sure need another democratic superpower uh, to help the United States uh, to maintain a rules-based global order. Uh, this rules-based global order is under massive challenge, uh, obviously from Russia in Ukraine, but in our part of the hmm. world, particularly from China. And uh, this is where I think India uh, has so much potential hmm. to be a force for good. India has uh, democracy, uh, the rule of law, hmm. uh, to a considerable extent the English language, the world's common language. Hmm. And this is why I think uh, in the decades to come, if there is to be a leader of the free world, it's as likely to be the Indian Prime Minister as the American President. Uh, Mr. Abbott, uh, because uh, you, you're making a very interesting point here. There has been a lot of focus on the Western powers like the United States of America and the United Kingdom and Europe in general. Do you think it is time also for Australia and India to rise together and be seen as those big superpowers in a global changing order? A absolutely. Uh, one of the great things about the Modi Prime Ministership uh, is that under Prime Minister Modi, India is starting to take its rightful place uh, in the world's global leadership councils. Uh, I think India is now taken extremely seriously, uh, not just uh, in the region and on the subcontinent, uh, but right around the world, as it should be, uh, because not only is India now the world's most populous country, uh, it's uh, um, in nominal terms uh, the world's fifth largest economy, in purchasing power terms, it's mm. probably substantially bigger than that. And I think that the upside potential in India is simply massive. And uh, I think it would be all to the good uh, mm. of uh, India and indeed uh, of democracies everywhere, mm. including Australia, uh, for India to be playing a maximal leadership role uh, in the months, years and decades to come. And, that's exactly what I think uh, India has been doing under Prime Minister Modi.
what would be your focus, uh, do you think, should be in this meeting? Uh, how has your relationship been with Prime Minister Modi? You met him previously as well uh, until 2021. There have been a lot of uh, times that those uh, meetings have taken place. So do tell us what are your expectations from Prime Minister Modi's visit to Australia, one. And secondly, about your relationship with Prime Minister Modi. Um, when I was Prime Minister, the two most impressive figures on the world stage uh, were Narendra Modi and Shinzo Abe, and between them, they are chiefly responsible for the Quad, uh, which I think is the most important strategic development uh, since the formation of NATO uh, back in the late 1940s. Um, I've always had a very warm uh, relationship with Prime Minister Modi. Uh, I appreciate the fact that he isn't just another politician. He's also a deeply spiritual man. I appreciate the fact that he does want to reach out to the wider world uh, rather than simply focus uh, on subcontinental affairs. Um, one of the great things that uh, Prime Minister Modi and I were able to do together uh, was initiate the India-Australia trade talks. Yes. Uh, just uh, a few months back, they came to fruition uh, in the ECTA agreement. I think the important thing is for both sides to make the most of that and mm. the point I keep making to major Australian businesses is please, uh, just as a few decades ago you all had a China strategy, uh, now that so much of that has been thwarted and frustrated, mm. now you all need to have an India strategy uh, because as I say, uh, India is an extraordinary potential source. Mm. Uh, of markets for Australia, of resource and energy security uh, yeah. Australia can provide to India. Uh, and then, of course, there's, uh, there's the supply chain gaps, which I think India is mm. extremely well placed to fill. Mr. Abbott, uh, because uh, China appeared as, uh, and tried to emerge as a challenger to the United States of America, but uh, it's also been amid a lot of controversies with the aggression that China has led with. Do you think that's one of the reasons that in Asia specifically, it can be an Indian century, it can be a time of India where with its democracy like you're mentioning, and perhaps not the aggression that China has followed, it can become one of those global friends that the world needs at a time like this? Well, I've often said, and I think it's absolutely been true, um, that America is the only country that has had uh, both the strength and the benevolence uh, to be, if you like, the world's policeman. But I think in coming decades, India uh, has the capacity to likewise have the kind of strength and benevolence uh, that America has shown over the last uh, uh, 70 years in which arguably Britain showed in the century before that. So um, I think that uh, there's enormous potential uh, for India to exercise liberal democratic leadership, uh, not just in our region, but throughout the world. It started to do this under Prime Minister Modi, and I hope this very much continues. Mr. Abbott, let's talk about your Indian experience and connection as well. You have visited Delhi, you've visited our country. Anything that you remember as a fond memory, what is it about India that you like, apart from, of course, the official meetings that you've indulged in, Mr. Abbott? Well, Pooja, uh, my first trip to India was back in 1981 when I was uh, quite young. I was a student backpacking my way uh, from Australia to England. And I thought it would be discourteous of me to fly over uh, hundreds of millions of Indians without paying them a visit. So I had almost three months backpacking around India, starting in Bombay, uh, moving through Rajasthan to Delhi, up into Kashmir. Uh, and eventually I went to Bihar, Bihar province, where the Australian Jesuits had a mission. Uh, I spent uh, uh, quite a few weeks uh, helping in the schools in Hazari Bag, in Bokaro Steel City, in Dalton Ganj and elsewhere. Uh, I have very fond memories of that trip. Um, I loved the work that the Australian Jesuits were doing, uh, but I also loved the way uh, the Indian people were so keen uh, to better themselves and mm. were so keen uh, to make the most of all of their heritage, including uh, the heritage of, uh, of recent times 
and uh, so keen to make the most of their education. And I certainly did my best uh, uh, when I was uh, a, a young graduate in those uh, schools in Bihar mm. uh, to try to encourage that quenchless curiosity which is at the heart of any person who really wants to make a difference and be a force for good. That's very heartening to hear that you had uh, good experience and memories and I'm, I'm also pleasantly surprised that you remember all the names of all the states and the areas that you visited. <laughs> I appreciate that, Mr. Abbott. Uh, the last time Prime Minister Modi visited Australia, you were the Prime Minister. Uh, if you can tell us a little bit about, I mean, we've discussed it already, but about uh, your interactions at that point. What was the focus then and do you think uh, that has helped make a bridge, form a bridge from where other issues are also now being dis discussed with uh, Prime Minister Anthony Albert? Well, there's absolutely no doubt that uh, every Australian Prime Minister uh, wants, wants uh, to be a good friend uh, of the Indian Prime Minister. But I think there's no doubt that uh, Prime Minister Modi has gone the extra mile, um, as, as well as his ministers. Uh, uh, for instance, uh, Foreign Minister Jai Shankar has yeah. been to Australia three times in just the last 12 months. So, so India, to its credit, is making a big effort with Australia. Mm. And I think that Australia, particularly in my time, mm. in Prime Minister Morrison's time, and now in Prime Minister Albanese's time, is, is making a big effort with India. Um, I'll never forget uh, spending time with Prime Minister Modi uh, back in 2014. Uh, his speech to the Australian Parliament uh, was a, uh, a wonderful, wonderful speech. Uh, he got a rock star welcome um, from Australians, particularly Australians yes. of Indian background. He responded to them with enormous warmth and enthusiasm. And uh, I think he really did feel uh, very much at home here. Hmm. And I've got to say, whenever I visit India, uh, while India is, I suppose, uh, exotic, uh, by Australian standards, you never feel like a stranger. You never feel like you're a foreigner in India. And I certainly want to see uh, a great sense of warmth um, uh, between Australians and Indians, uh, because I think that can only be good for uh, both countries and for the wider world. Mr. Abbott, on behalf of all Indians, I would uh, love to see you back in India and visit many more places. It's a diverse nation. But importantly, you've made some very important points, and that's about democracy standing with each other to ensure that the next changing global order will have nations like Australia and India as friends. And you have been a part of forming those friendships and bridges as well. Former Prime Minister of Australia, Mr. Tony Abbott, thank you very much for speaking to India Today Television. Thank you, Pritchard.